Ron Atkinson's experimental role as Peterborough United's football troubleshooter has hit its first major hitch. Following their bust up at the training ground, manager Steve Bleasdale wants to exclude Ron from the dressing room on match days. When Ron arrives at Peterborough's ground for their game against Stockport County, he makes a beeline for the office of club owner Barry Fry. Um, we have a problem. We have a slight problem. Yeah, um, we shut the door. Shut one, it. Of the, one of the things I'd like to have done um, was spend some time in the dressing room before the match. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you told me just that. A minute, just, a minute, just a minute. Now, that has raised an issue. It's raised a slight issue. With a little incident, not an incident, uh, Thursday morning in training, I was watching the training. Mm. Had a little chat with two or three of the players, and then all of a sudden there seemed to be... Uh, the manager seemed to be a bit upset, even to the extent of saying if Ron Atkinson's in the dressing room on Saturday, I'm walking out. Well, he can walk out, because no, no, that's no, not no. my conversation minute, with him at all. I said that, that you were allowed in the dressing room before, during and after the game. Okay. That was what I'd done with you. That's what I've told him, that's what okay. I've told all the players. All right. so, so and I will go in and tell no, him no, no, that you now. Don't, you don't have to I've say told anything. him that twice. We well. are not doing anything before a game. We've got no. a football match to win. Yeah. Let's get the football match won. Here we are. And let's sit down in the cold light of day with a pot of tea and say, look, that's where we come from. So long as you're aware of that, and so long as let's just keep you within the confines. While Ron and Barry plot a resolution to the dressing room dilemma, Steve still determined to be the master of his own domain. But after their woeful performance against Bristol Rovers, he knows it's crucial he gets the full backing of his team. Sit down, everyone, doesn't matter who you are, subs, whatever. First thing, I know, deep within here, you've got togetherness. This is where we bounce back. I'm confident, if you're confident, you will absolutely take these to the fucking cleaners. Match the battle. Roll your sleeves up first. With kickoff looming, Ron has high hopes for his goalkeeping recruit, Tony Godden, who's giving some last minute advice to Mark Tyler, returning from injury today. It's the home side who get things started there. That's a great ball, lad. Great ball, son. As the game gets underway, there's palpable tension between Ron and Steve. Luckily, this hasn't translated to the players. Certainly, it's a million times brighter than last week, anyway, isn't it? It's a good ball, sir. Good ball, eh? Go on, son! Here's uh, St. Ledger. Oh, just a whisker wide of Spencer's goal. Sean St. Ledger, so close for Peterborough. OK, that's it. Soon, the investment in Tony Gordon's coaching pays dividends. Mark Tyler shows sharp reactions to deny the opposition. Liam Dickinson and Mark Tyler's down to smother. Really smart save. With the keeper inspiring confidence, the team's entire rear guard is looking rock solid. But the spark's still missing at the other end as they struggle to break down the leakiest defence in the league. And quality. Oh, oh pretty! He's in! And here's Danny yes. Crow, a real chance here for Crow. Lost the ball goalwards, but over. Danny Crow with a real chance for Peterborough not taken. In the second half, the posh's dominance finally pays off. As captain Dean Holden makes the all-important breakthrough. It's Peter Gay. It's Gaines ball in towards the captain Dean Holden, and Posh have finally broken through. The skipper with the goal. Posh ahead. Steve also gives notice of his tactical nous. He brings on attacker Ryan Semple, and sees an immediate return. Sampson Semps, behind. Seeming, seeming, they're working, they can win the game. Semple strong, away from Williams, Ryan Semple, a second goal for Peterborough. That's the point safe now, Ryan Semple doubles the money. That is a massive, massive three points for Peterborough United. They're the games you want to win, really. Just important to get the three points today. Semple's come on and produced a wonder goal and uh, gives a bit of a cushion. And everyone's buzzing after the game because, you know, as I say, another three points. Gives us that extra bit to go for promotion. I thought uh, tactically we were great today. It was a hard game. In fact, I thought that was hard in the Bristol Rovers. Honestly, I did. Um, I just thought we played very well today. Okay, see. So thanks a lot. Thank you. So Posh earned three more precious points and pick up their first clean sheet in five games. Big plus for them today. I thought Mark Tyler looked strong, assertive. You could see a confidence in him. Seeing the advent of sort of Tony Gordon come on board, he's just come back after three or four weeks' injury. 
even if you just squeeze that last little two or three percent out of the custodian, then you know that that is a, that might be the difference between winning and losing, getting promotion and not getting promotion. The victory keeps Peterborough in sixth place and means they even keep alive their outside hopes of automatic promotion. It's the following week, and it seems Ron's input has started to bear fruit. But if the big Ron manager experiment is going to succeed, manager Steve Bleasdale is going to have to accept our troubleshooter's active involvement. And that includes being in the dressing room. Ron steals himself for another potential shouting match, but it looks like his fears may be premature. Mainly because Steve's forthright coaching style has knackered a key weapon in his armory, his voice. <coughs> uh, success for this football club is just to survive. And that's where you come in, Ron. So what's the problem? Steve um, doesn't want me in the, doesn't want, basically doesn't want me in the, the dressing room before matches. Players will get confused. There were no two voices. No, no, no. There were no two voices. No, no, no. Says, I've just said to you, I'm in there just to say one voice. Ron says he won't get involved. Ron's been the manager for a long time, and I know it's in your blood. I think you've been very, very insecure about it. I told you that last week. We are doing well. We are doing so well. I don't want any disruptions because he will sack me if I get three defeats on the run, and I don't want it. Me being in the dressing room won't win you a game or no, won't lose no, you a no, game. No, your players will and, and your, your organisation. No. If there's antagonism from you, I don't no, want to be in there. No. There won't be antagonism. No, there will, Steve. No, because I will, think Steve. it's been great. Be, the lads have no, come no, out there will, wish them all Steve. the best on the pitch. Steve, there will be antagonism, but what I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to hang about corridors like a lollipop. My domain is the dressing room. I'm, I think, Ron, there'll be too many voices. What about if one's not saying anything? Who? Me. I disagree with it. So what are we going to do? I am coming here to <clears throat> nothing else, and I think you'd have to say that that should have been backed up by three or four weeks we've been together, to nothing else but to help you. OK, I'll tell you what. Do what you want, then. Do it. Fine. What would be wrong in me coming in the dressing room at quarter to two and listening to your briefing. Yeah. And then going out the dressing room and not coming back. That'll do me. So, they finally managed to reach a compromise. Except Steve still doesn't seem all that convinced. For me, it ain't about the cameras, it ain't about Ron, it ain't about it's for Barry Fry and me. I'm the manager. Any manager will tell you that they don't need all this. And I certainly don't need it. I just find the whole thing hard to deal with. Hopefully Ron can allay Steve's fears so the young boss trusts and learns from him. Next time on Big Ron Manager, will the posh blow their promotion hopes by repeatedly choking against bottom of the table sides? Fucking now! Is he? I'm quicker than him. Fucking hate these games, bottom of the leagues. When you beat them by sheer effort, it pisses you off big time. <laughs> when it's a battle, you fucking battle! Battle! Calm down! Calm down! And as things reach boiling point on match day, can Ron win the battle off the pitch as he tries to rescue Posh's finances? I'm running out of money, I'm running out of time, I'm running out of ideas. I'm fucked, mate. Next tonight on Sky One. Have a nice day, kids. I want to bite you. Oh! It's weeds.